Australia, I was not at all. So how quickly things can change and that I was able to to bring it home at the end. Uh, I don't know. It's it, it's crazy moments in my life and I can't believe I'm actually uh, I've won again. We know you traveled for a couple of months with the Australian Open trophy. It seemed to go everywhere with you. <laughs> Is that well, true? So the thing was about the Australian Open trophy is like we finally get the original size trophy. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So because there's always so small replicas. So back in the day, yeah. you used to get the small replicas like this. You would look like, where is it? You know. <laughs> and you're like, I've done all this work to take this thing home. I was a bit disappointed, to be quite honest. Like back in the day. And so, they gave you the real size. So this year now, since a few years, they give the original size. So when I got took that home, that 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 trophy home, I was like, oh my god! Like people were like really pumped and very excited to see it more excited to see the trophy than me so, <laughs> so i was like you know i'm going to take it to the snow i'm bringing it to show friends and the Wimbledon trophy the replica we get now is 75 percent of the size of the original one okay so, do you have plans oh. for it take it around <laughs> maybe we, i should parade it around a little bit <laughs> no did you sense today in the first game you know he hit a ball like bounced it to the net uh, three forehand misses. You sense he was a bit nervous, or did you see something in his movement that that you sense that you could take advantage of early? Funny enough, I still don't know what his problem is because I haven't asked anybody exactly what it was. A blister. Okay, so um, I couldn't tell in his movement if he was struggling to his right or his left, mm -hmm. and then he was serving volleying. Um, okay, which then makes sense if he was struggling going side to side. Why not serving volleying? Because moving forward maybe is easier. I'm not sure, but because I couldn't tell. Um, it didn't affect me, uh, to be honest, and because I wasn't actually looking over to see what he was doing on the change events, uh, I just thought he was dizzy the first time around when he called the doctor, because that's why you call the doctor, or because of a painkiller. Um, but then at three lava, when he called the physio as well, and he did the, all of the retape, I just felt like maybe he was just about buying a bit of time to, you know, slow things down a little bit. But I didn't actually, I couldn't, because I couldn't tell, I think my experience helped me through that part. And I heard you also cried at the, ch at the change events, which if I would have seen that, that would have maybe rocked my boat. But because I didn't see it, actually, I, I, I think it helped actually, I'm not seeing it. So what do you think, you know, two sets to love? Because you've been in this position many times before. Are you getting ahead of yourself too much? Because, you know, normal circumstances, you're probably thinking, okay, I've got this. Right. But it's a Grand Slam final, it's Wimbledon, you can't really afford to let that those thoughts creep in. Yeah, and drizzles can come in yeah. and you know, it could be back and forth, back and forth. And because I didn't know what his problem was, I, don't, I didn't know if maybe he was going to come back after a rain delay stronger. And actually I was telling myself at uh, two sets to love and two all, I was, I'm going to lose this third set because I've never won Wimbledon winning, not dropping any sets right. at all. So I was like, so clearly I'm going to drop my third, the third set. And so that was my mindset, not okay, being to negative. Take the pressure off. Maybe to yeah. take the pressure off, but I was just like, for me, I was as I was missing opportunities, you know, early on to maybe get the crucial break in the third, uh, I told myself, well, it's normal actually to be maybe be broken and lose the set. <laughs> and I think that relaxed me too. And uh, I kept, you know, kept with my game plan and actually realized that I was always able to put him into difficult positions and it was good. And, so, and you know who the last player was to actually go through Wimbledon without dropping a set? Do you know who that is? Oh, well, wasn't it Bjorn Borg? That's maybe? right. Do you know the year? 70... You're pretty good with this stuff. 76. Ah, Thank you. you. <laughs> <Thanks for coming>. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of your game, this entire tournament you were never down. Yeah. And tell me how that frees your game up and what are you doing differently now than when you won here the first time? Well, the first time, I mean, those were different times. I was coming in um, into... I was coaching against you. Right. Uh, I came into Wimbledon having lost the French Open first round. So I was uh, not planning to win Wimbledon. Uh, what I remember going through uh, between Paris and Wimbledon, do not read any press because people start to really get to me and tell me like, ooh, this guy's talented, but, but no good. At the, when it comes to you know the crunch time, and so I didn't read any press, and I went on to win Halle, Andy won Queens, and then we met in the semis here, and actually I really uh, blocked my back as well against Lopez on, on the old court too, uh, in the warm up, but I thought okay, uh, so Wimbledon that's over, and I kind of won in three sets somehow, and I was able to recover because I was young and and start to feel better as the tournament progressed, and I played Schalke in the quarters who was also hurt himself, like similar, I think, like the, what Marin had was blisters. Anyway, uh, long story short, I, I played a great semis and a great finals, but it, it's all more a blur because it was all so new for me. So this time around, I just feel like 
because I've been there so many times, you know, you go through the same routines, you know what you have to do, what you shouldn't be doing. And because I'm older, I just need more downtime. I just need to relax more. I can't be so active like I used to be. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a long time ago, 14 years ago. I hardly remember a thing. <laughs> it's just amazing, your memory of every match that you have in tournament runs. And um, you often point to the most important match you won here was when you beat Pete Sampras right. and uh, one of your fondest memories. And now you surpassed Pete Sampras. Yes, and that's strange for me, because Pete was my hero growing up, besides Edberg especially. Um, so to see Edberg cheering for me from the Royal Box, that was cool, you know, like, first I was cheering for him, now he's cheering back for me, same thing was like Rod Labors. Um, it's unbelievable, and uh, the Pete match, I didn't understand in the moment itself what a stepping stone or a milestone that was in my career, and which led me to so many other moments, um, because I had no business to, being Pete that year. Um, I was um, ranked top 30 maybe, um, Pete was going for his fifth and uh, I mean I got lucky in the fifth uh, somehow and uh, played great, uh, I did play great but Pete was not, not playing at his very best and he, he made some crucial errors that he shouldn't have and that, which allowed me to stay in the game or go ahead in the game and then margins were so slim that all of a sudden we lost that match but uh, that was truly a, a very important match looking back uh, for the rest of my career, really. Oh, well done today. You stand alone now, number eight. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.